Welcome to video 5 of the Quantum Field Theory Basics series. In this video, I'm going to improve your motivation for learning this difficult theory. I'm going to talk about the incredible successes it has achieved over the years. In physics, there are three types of success. Unifying explanations, good predictions, and eliminating paradoxes. So, for instance, Newton's theory of gravity achieved unifying success when he explained the motion of the planets in terms of the same force that causes an apple to fall to Earth. His theory achieved good prediction success when it predicted the return of Halley's Comet and the eclipses of the Moon. It eliminated the paradox of why planets seem to wander aimlessly in the sky. So, what types of successes has quantum field theory had? Quantum physics really began in 1900 with Max Planck's explanation for black body radiation. Before 1940, quantum field theory was bogged down with technical problems. Meanwhile, another theory called quantum mechanics was producing a good deal of success by explaining the spectral lines of hydrogen atoms and the overall pattern of the periodic table. It wasn't until 1950 that quantum field theory's problems began to be resolved. When quantum field theory started to produce results, the first question was, what about quantum mechanics? Physicists quickly figured out that quantum field theory reduces to quantum mechanics for fields with mass, like electrons and protons. Thus, success number one, quantum field theory, reduces to quantum mechanics and indirectly predicts the spectral lines of hydrogen and the pattern of the periodic table. The other great theory of classical physics is Maxwell's electromagnetism. This wildly successful theory achieved unifying success when he explained that electric fields and magnetic fields are different aspects of the same thing the electromagnetic field. He achieved good prediction success when he predicted that you could send messages with radio waves. Compared with Newton's theory of light, it eliminated the paradox of light bending around corners and forming diffraction patterns. Electromagnetism is not predicted by quantum mechanics. It has to be added in. Quantum field theory generates Maxwell's theory from a symmetry principle. That's a great unification. One theory can describe both matter and light. It's a huge success for quantum field theory. One of the early successes occurred in 1947 when physicists learned how to measure the magnetic moment of the electron to extremely high accuracy. This is done by placing it in a magnetic field and measuring the frequency of radiation it absorbs. The resulting number is usually expressed in units of the Bohr magneton and comes out as 2.00231930436146. Using quantum field theory, Julian Swinger figured out how to calculate the magnetic moment. His calculation agreed with the measurement to better than one part in a million. Back in 1947, those results were the clue that quantum field theory was on the right track. The agreement would get even better. In the following years, experimentalists made even more accurate measurements, and theoreticians refined their calculations. Today, the agreement between theory and experiment is better than one part per billion. There was another story that played out in the late 1940s. One of the spectral lines of hydrogen was predicted by quantum mechanics to be singular, that is, unsplit. Willis Lamb suspected that it was really two lines and did a fancy experiment that showed he was right. Using quantum field theory, theoretical physicists figured out how to calculate the amount of the splitting. Back then, the agreement between theory and experiment was about one part in a hundred. Today the agreement is about one part in ten thousand. In 
In 1929, physicist Paul Dirac predicted from his equations that antimatter might exist. The anti-electron was discovered in 1931, and Paul Dirac got the Nobel Prize in 1933. The irony is that Dirac's prediction used a particle model that required negative energies and an infinite sea of negative energy electrons. This created a huge number of paradoxes, but Dirac held on to his viewpoint even after quantum field theory rose to prominence. Quantum field theory predicts antimatter without requiring negative energies. Dirac's proof of antimatter turned out to be a mathematical coincidence. In the 1800s, the theory called statistical physics had great success. However, in order to make the theory work, physicists had to invent the idea of identical particles. In regular life, we never truly encounter identical members of a group. There is always a little blemish that allows you to tell one from another. Thus, the idea that the members of a group could be completely identical was paradoxical. It goes by the name of Gibbs paradox. With quantum field theory, the members of a group are all excitations of the same field. Gibbs paradox goes away. In the 1920s, physicists developed a principle that only one electron can be in a state at a time. Electrons became the first type of a particle called fermions, after the physicist Enrico Fermi. A similar principle was developed for light and its photons. Light prefers to be in the same state. That principle is associated with the name boson after the physicist Satendra Bose. Eventually, all the elementary particles were classified as either fermions or bosons. The principle has proved useful in making lasers and explaining atomic behavior. But why should things divide into these two groups? The best answer came from quantum field theory. Reasoning from symmetry principles, it showed that the world divides into fermions and bosons. The famous spin statistics theorem is one of the successes of quantum field theory. The standard model is confirmed every day in accelerator experiments. The accelerators allow scientists to measure the particle types, angles, and energies that you get from colliding beams of electrons, positrons, neutrinos, mesons, and protons. In the 1970s, the accelerator experiments were said to be testing quantum field theory and the standard model. One of the most famous tests was the search for the W and Z bosons. They were predicted in 1965 when electroweak theory was developed. Electroweak theory unifies the weak force with electromagnetism. The bosons were predicted to have a mass around 90 GeV, and by 1980, they had been detected with that mass. Nowadays, physicists don't even test the model. They use it to predict the results of experiments. In fact, they trusted the model enough to build a $10 billion machine in Europe to measure the mass of a key quantum of the model, the Higgs boson. It was predicted in 1965 and was finally detected in 2012. During the 1950s and 60s, accelerators detected a large number of field quanta and classified them by mass and charge. There were more elementary particles than there were atoms in the periodic table. Fairly quickly, physicists saw patterns in the data. Eventually, with the aid of the standard model, they learned how to write computer programs to make predictions of the mass, charge, and spin of the various particles. Here's a chart showing their results. These results are similar to predicting the structure of the periodic table. 
So the standard model is the most tested and verified scientific theory in history. If you're one of the scientists that worked on it, you should be proud. And if you're a human, you should also be proud because it was your species that figured out this complicated theory. In the next video, I'm going to start on the assumptions of quantum field theory. It's time to go back to the very basics.